My name is Dr. Jacob Wilson. I'm on the Scientific Advisory Board of Dimatized Nutrition, and I also have a laboratory at the University of Tampa where we specialize in building muscle as well as bodybuilding and how to lose fat and get shredded. You name it, we can actually look at it. I want to bring this sport to a new level with the latest that science has to offer. I think bodybuilders should focus on really nutrient dense foods, foods that have a lot of vitamins, you know, minerals that are high in fiber. These things are really good for not just bodybuilding, but they're good for health. Obviously, if you look at muscle, protein is going to be really critical. And that's been a lot of my research is protein and amino acids. And I think a lot of people, when they think about optimizing protein, the biggest question is like, oh, how much protein do I need a single day? But really, I think my philosophy is that they're going about it the wrong way. They got to focus on how much protein should I have at each individual meal? And then how frequently can I consume my meals? So basically what, what we would say is for, you know, an average 180 pound guy, probably around 30 grams of protein, 40 grams of protein is gonna optimize, you know, that muscle building response. That will obviously go up when you have like a 250 pound guy. Now, what we found though is in between meals, branch chain amino acids will actually keep protein synthesis spiked. So what, what I recommend is having something like four, five meals a day in between, have snacks with like branched chain amino acids in between those meals. And for those of you guys who are really into bodybuilding nutrition, you know that leucine is the king of branched chain amino acids. You need about three grams of leucine per serving. So that's actually what 30 to 40 grams of protein is giving you. It's giving you at three grams of leucine. Then you have branched chain amino acids in between meals, and that will maintain protein synthesis. So once you have your protein figured out, then you're talking about your energy. And that's gonna come from obviously carbohydrates and your fats. And it's obviously gonna depend on how hard that you're training. If someone's training three days a week, obviously they're not gonna need as much energy. If someone's training twice a day, you know, those carbohydrate needs are gonna go up. It's important that individuals obviously select out good choices, particularly like if they're trying to diet you know, if someone's selecting like really, really high calorie density foods, it's gonna be harder to lose fat. So that's where someone might select out higher fiber foods and things of that nature. But there's such a world of nutrition that you can go into. Dairy will have both protein, fats, and carbohydrates. And so it's how the dairy is prepared, how it's strained, how it's filtered that will determine whether you're getting a lot of lactose, which is the high amount of carbohydrate in there, or a lot of fat, or just more of the protein. For example, with, with whey protein, you're filtering out that protein. Same thing with things like casein. So it's a very high quality source of protein that's mixed in with carbs and fats. And then how you prepare it will determine what you're getting out of it. For bodybuilders in general, when they're talking about dairy, they really want to get the protein out of it because we know it's the highest quality that you have. And that's where, again, things like whey. One thing I'll say about dairy is studies are showing more and more. More servings of dairy people have per day, the healthier they are, the leaner they are, the more muscle they have. So it's the perfect source of protein that we know of. And then all the animal-based sources for protein are gonna be ideal. So if it's animal-derived, it's gonna be ideal. So if it's not whey or egg-based, then you're talking about things like lean meats, like lean beef, lean steak is good. It'll make you grow. Lean chicken, you know, turkey, things of that nature. Salmon is excellent. It's not just gonna be excellent for muscle growth and the high quality of protein, but it's gonna give you things like omega-3 fatty acids which are also gonna help you stay lean. As far as your sources of carbohydrates, well, the thing about it with bodybuilding is, especially if someone is dieting, they're gonna be hungrier. So you want things to keep you full, but also you want things that are gonna fuel your workout. You wanna think of yourself as like a high performance car, and you wanna fuel your workout ideally. 
and that's going to be with more of the moderate to low glycemic carbohydrates, things like oatmeal, sweet potatoes. Dr. Don Lehman recommends basically that if you're looking at a carb, you're like, oh, which bread do I select? You know, which carb do I select? You want to always keep your ratio of carbohydrates to fiber at five to one. Well, it can go lower than that, but for example, if you have a piece of bread and it says 20 grams of carbs, five grams of fiber, it's four to one. That's perfectly in that range. But if you have another piece of bread, 20 grams of carbs, two grams of fiber, that's 10 to one. And what essentially is gonna happen is you're gonna conk out, you won't have the energy to train, and you're gonna be starving because you're gonna be hypoglycemic. Your blood sugar is gonna be low. So you won't be able to focus on your training. So that's why I recommend selecting things like that out. One thing we also know is that the type of carbohydrates and proteins that you select out and fats are gonna be specific to the time of day. So when you're done training, it's okay to have a higher amount of carbs. It's okay possibly to have a little bit higher glycemic carbs after you train, meaning like lower fiber after you train, because you replenish your carb stores faster. And you're more in a state where you're less likely to store fat. But when you wake up in the morning, that's a whole different issue. One thing that we know is that you can program your metabolism for the entire day. In that case, you actually want to be more conservative with the carbs and have a little bit higher fat with breakfast. So your carbohydrates should be more fibrous in nature. It's okay to have a little bit of fat, like you know, whole eggs as well with breakfast. And what we found is that when you do that, I'm not saying limit your carbs for the whole day, because a lot of times people will go, oh, you're saying to limit my carbs all day? No, I'm saying that if you lower your carbs with breakfast and increase the fats and have high amount of proteins, you program your metabolism the rest of the day to metabolize fat instead of carbohydrates, which means you spare your carb stores and you're leaner at the end of the day. And studies are coming out more and more showing this. Sodium is obviously a you know, really controversial topic, you know, and bodybuilders are always worried about, like, oh my God, you know, I, I don't want to hold water. Really the only time that they're worried about holding water is going to be pre-contest, you know, and it's always going to depend. If someone's doing CrossFit, for example, they're outside oftentimes in, with no air conditioning and they're sweating a lot, you know, they might lose a liter of fluid. They might lose a couple pounds of fluid and with that they're going to lose sodium. One thing is this, if someone goes and drinks distilled water after they train, they'll actually end up peeing out most of what they drunk. Sodium holds on to that water. So it's okay to have things with electrolytes and with sodium. If you trained really hard and you sweated a ton, it's okay to put some salt on your food. It's, you, you don't have to freak out because if you have a little bit extra water, does it mean that you're storing fat? But in reality, again, hydration is critical. Going back to the cell swelling theory, we think muscles grow because they swell. So if you're dehydrated, studies show that cells might actually get smaller. That's the opposite effect. So I think sodium is important along with your normal hydration needs. If you do eat something that's bad, you just you have to factor it into the entire day. Doesn't mean that's the end of your life. And a lot of bodybuilders are freaking out, oh my God, I do five hours of cardio the next day. Hey, it happened. Just get back on, on your diet, you know, overall. But obviously, you know, times like special occasions, it's Christmas, if it's your birthday, if, if it's a friend's wedding, yeah, it's okay to have a piece of cake, you know what I mean? Uh, just go back on your program after that. I think that people who aren't aware of the science or aware of bodybuilding, you know, I think bodybuilding is very advanced. Bodybuilders are very advanced. They understand a lot of things that general society don't. But if you ask someone in general society, like, like, oh, you know, I'm going to lose weight or I want to get my body better. And then they cut out like all the meats in their diet. And, you know, all they're eating is, you know, a bunch of pasta and a bunch of fruit and almost no protein. And they think that's healthy, right? But in reality, it's not because you're giving your body a bunch of energy, but you're not making your muscles work. Every time you take in protein, your muscles actually have to work to increase protein synthesis. It drains the muscle of energy. So now you can use those carbs to fuel the energy. But if you just have a bunch of carbs and a low amount of protein, 
you're not in a good spot. And I think if you look at our society, obesity unfortunately is going up and up and up and overweightness is going up and up and up and in kids as well. One takeaway with nutrition is you gotta be consistent with your program. So if you start a new diet and like two, three days later, it's not working, you're like, oh my God, what's going on? Honestly, bodybuilding's a long process. Like you see these guys on stage, it didn't happen in a week, right? It's years of focus and dedication. Same thing in nutrition. You come up with a game plan, you stick to it, see how that's working for you. What I want is this. There's so much misconceptions out there. There's so many myths out there. I want people to be educated. So for more videos and content like this, keep coming back to bodybuilding.com. I guarantee we're gonna have the latest that science has to offer on this sport.